Imagine that your Uber driver has multiple secondary degrees in engineering and could have essentially designed the car you're in. Your local pharmacy employee has a medical degree, and your convenience store cashier actually spent years working as a banker. For many immigrants employed in the USA, this hypothetical is the life they lead. Except their degrees aren't from Harvard or Yale or any random US university. They have been educated in their country of birth, and licensing barriers in the United States have strongly restricted any sort of career mobility. This epidemic, known as brain waste, is the underutilization of foreign educated professionals in the workplace despite their high qualifications. Nowhere is this more evident than in the United States. First, let's delve into what topics we'll be exploring here today. Career mobility connotes how free someone is to move the ranks of his or her job or to switch occupations entirely. Licensing barriers are what prohibit endless career mobility as they set requirements in place for certain professions in one's country of residence. Brain waste occurs when licensing barriers lead to the underemployment of foreign professionals, which results in a loss of human capital that is counterproductive to society overall. Foreign educated workers are often put at a disadvantage because of occupational licensing, as their training sometimes does not translate, so to speak, to other countries. Brain waste also occurs when, foreign, when employers are skeptical or question the quality of a foreign degree. While this is found throughout the West, it is definitely most evident in the United States. It is evidently due to unfounded American elitism that Tsinghua University, ranked higher worldwide than Yale or Columbia, is seen as lesser than in the eyes of the American job market. I'm Aline Holmgren, and through my father's diplomatic career, I've met many incredibly talented, incredibly capable individuals native to our different posts. Seeing that these incredibly talented friends of mine who were highly accomplished in so many ways weren't afforded the same opportunities that Americans take for granted ignited a lot of passion in this topic for me. When we lived in Podgorica, Montenegro, our school secretary, Marina Roganovic, who is one of the smartest women I've ever met, lamented how widespread foreign exchange programs were for any middle-class U.S. teen with rudimentary knowledge in a foreign language work. Yet for her, in Montenegro, only the most elite students with near-native fluency in their target language were permitted to study abroad in high school. Not surprisingly, for as smart as she is, Marina secured one of these spots, yet it didn't, it didn't end up helping her all that much. Even with her impeccable smarts, her nearly perfect English ability, she was still relegated to working as a secretary in Montenegro. Not by choice, but by, because of lack of opportunity afforded to her elsewhere because of her Montenegrin university degree. It struck me as incredibly unfair that the gifted people I knew weren't given the same opportunities that the average American took for granted. Having met many teenagers here at local Mexican schools through volunteer opportunities, I'm consistently astounded at how these students have to work 10 times as hard as the typical American high schooler to have even a sliver of a chance at attending an American university. Yet for these students, they think that all that work is worth it because they think it's their only pathway to having a career in the US. When I lived in Moscow, my half Russian best friend, Sofia, laughed in my face when I asked her if she'd ever consider going to school in Russia. She'd always planned to live and work in the US and even though Lomonsov Moscow State University is consistently ranked among the top 100 universities worldwide, she still didn't think that that degree would be enough. International students, to attend even an average or mediocre US university for international students, um, this acceptance often comes as a result of formidable effort and achievement. It's normally be reported as being two to three times harder for international students to get into top American universities because it's widely speculated that admissions officers for uh, these top universities will cap their international admissions. Um, one of the reasons that these international students are at such an unfair disadvantage is because admissions officers are often needlessly skeptical about the rigor of non-American style high schools. Having personally seen students come to American style high schools and be highly accelerated because of the elevated education standards in their home country, I find the implication that local institutions are automatically written off as lesser than deeply disturbing. There's a vicious cycle at play that will turn away international university applicants because obviously admissions officers are needlessly skeptical of a foreign education, but then also turn away international job applicants because of their lack of an American university degree. 
Clearly, so much of brain waste can be attributed to the detrimental belief that a non-American secondary education is inherently worse, despite the US being ranked behind 26 nations worldwide for its education quality. In order to minimize brain waste, it is vital that we rectify this misconception of Western superiority that has so deeply penetrated the mindsets of American employers. Brain waste also comes at a severe detriment to the American economy. In an, in an analysis by the Migration Policy Institute, statisticians found that the underutilization of immigrants' professional skills causes the U.S. to miss out on an average of $39 billion per year, which means in turn, federal, state, and local governments lose out on more than $10 billion per year in unrealized tax receipts. The fact that there is a shortage of doctors and teachers in the U.S., despite the thousands of qualified non-American teachers and doctors residing in the U.S., clearly underscores how much employers need to reassess their priorities in an increasingly diverse and integrated society. The U.S. literally can't afford not to hire these people when not doing so is detrimental to both economic and societal welfare. Even within ASF, there are numerous examples that underscore how, sorry, even within ASF, there are numerous examples that underscore how limiting brain waste can be. One teacher I spoke with, Miss Bailey, shared with me how many obstacles there are for foreign-born teachers who wish to work in the United States. Miss Bailey was educated almost entirely in Mexico, save for a year in, in the UK, and her education culminated in a degree from the UNAM. Her resume posts an impressive, boasts an impressive list of past careers, including employing her philosophy degree working at a museum, owning her own translation practice, and working at the UNAM language department. Ms. Bailey is a special case, particularly because of how aptly qualified she would be to teach in the U.S. Through ASF, she was able to attain a master's in multidisciplinary studies from SUNY Buffalo. However, this didn't necessarily provide her with the necessary teaching licensing. Her experience teaching at a university makes her super overqualified to teach at any K-12 institution. And since her husband is American, she isn't barred by any of the typical visa restrictions. She's considered moving to the U.S., but is fearful about the job opportunities, especially as compared to the work she's been able to do in Mexico. This isn't just anecdotal either. In another study by the Migration Policy Institute, statisticians found that foreign educated teachers, one in three foreign educated teachers um, was likely to be employed in a low-skilled job, which makes them three times more likely than U.S. educated teachers to be employed in low-skilled jobs. In the U.S., being employed as a K through 12 inst being employed as a K through 12 teacher is not held in the same esteem as it is almost anywhere else, where it's held at the same level as being a doctor or a lawyer. In Finland, it's actually harder to become a practicing K through 12 teacher than it is to become a doctor. And speaking of doctors, Mexico requires far more years of schooling than in the U.S. to become a practicing doctor. There's no reason these professionals should have to jump through so many hoops and expend the effort to be qualified for jobs that they wouldn't even be able to practice should they move. So on the topic of professionals, Miss Bailey also had a lawyer cousin who was incredibly successful in Bolivia, and yet when he moved to the US, it was as if his years of education and experience had been scrapped. If he wanted any chance of a similar career, he had to pass the notoriously difficult Washington DC bar exam which does little to measure your actual skill as a lawyer, and rather tests an, a minute, obscure understanding of American legal knowledge. While he did eventually pass the exam, according to Ms. Bailey, it was not without um, struggle, something we can all agree is useless for someone with years and years of real world legal experience. If such highly educated, talented individuals can feel so disheartened by the job opportunities afforded to them in the US, what does that tell you about all the other hopeful immigrants to the US? Anti-immigration advocates will argue that we should only be allowing the most skilled, knowledgeable, well-educated foreigners. However, if these individuals are demoted to inferior positions, then the U.S. does not deserve to rob nations of their citizens' skills and knowledge while refusing to make use of it themselves. Unfortunately, when 1.6 million, or 23% of the 7.2 million college-educated immigrants aged 25 or older are affected by brain waste, the prospects look rather grim anyways. Fortunately, one woman I spoke with had the opposite experience. My father's former Serbian teacher at the Foreign Service Institute was educated entirely in Serbia, um, which culminated in a degree from the University of Novi Sad. 
She's currently employed teaching um, diplomats on their way to former Yugoslavia, fluent Serbo-Croatian in under a year. For her, it is specifically because she has such a high level of Serbian knowledge and such a high level of education in Serbian that her skill set is so valuable. Other institutions in the US have a lot to learn from the Foreign Service Institute. Here, they specifically value how where you were schooled um, adds to your skill set rather than focusing on perceived prestige and name recognition. It's not everyone's goal to work in the United States and nor should it be. In nearly every case, the opportunities in one's home country are far better than any possibilities elsewhere. However, that being said, for those who believe that their skills would be better off, better applicable in another nation, these individuals shouldn't be barred from opportunity just because of where they were schooled. Peking University, National Taiwan University, and University Malaya are all ranked in the top 100 universities nationwide, and you probably haven't heard of half of these. But you have heard of Harvard, Oxford, and the University of Toronto. While the English-speaking world's equivalents aren't necessarily higher in quality, we're often indoctrinated into thinking so. When this sort of thinking permeates the minds of American employers, brain waste proliferates. American occupational licensing seem, serves as a form of discrimination that I've personally seen limit the opportunities of many highly talented and accomplished individuals. So, what can be done to mitigate brain waste? Everyone I spoke with agrees that one of the ways to mitigate brain waste is to put less emphasis on name recognition and university prestige and more recognition on years of real world experience. In nearly every case, a refugee doctor with 20 years of experience will be far more skilled than a newly minted med school graduate. Ms. Bailey also astutely pointed out that job interviews that require your potential employer to assess your problem solving and team working abilities are infinitely more insightful than looking at any slip of paper would be. Within ASF, we should start stressing what a specific university or program could actually gain you skill wise rather than focusing on perceived prestige. We should also try to foster the sort of team build, team working and problem solving abilities that know no licensing barriers. Lastly, we can all agree that, lastly, we can all agree that there needs to be a paradigm shift from thinking an American education is the only pathway to working in the US. Starting here today, we should start valuing skill, knowledge, and real world experience over name recognition. Thank you.